Hey guys, welcome to our, uni uh, our new unit, I can talk. Um, it's about ratios and proportions. So um, our first unit here is simply going to be um, expressing ratios. What is a ratio? How do we write one? So I've given you some terms to help you understand what it is that we're doing. Make sure you get them down. Um, a ratio is simply um, a comparison of two quantities. I'm taking two things. I want to compare those two numbers. Terms are what we refer to as those two numbers or quantities that we're comparing in a ratio. So I would have two terms in a ratio. Um, and then a, an equivalent ratio, very much like an equivalent fraction, expresses the same value as another ratio. All right. And actually what you'll notice is ratios are very much like fractions. We can write them in fractional form. So what I've given you are the three different ways that we can write um, our ratios. So there's a word form. Here you'll notice, and I've just used the same numbers. I'm using the word two to combine my, um, to compare my two numbers. So I have 55, 290. I haven't told you what it is we're comparing. That's okay. Um, so 55, 290. That would be one way to write this ratio. We could also write it in what we call ratio form, where we just use a colon. If I were reading this out loud, I would still read this 55 to 90. The, the colon is just the ratio form. And finally, you'll notice this is probably what you're familiar with seeing, fraction form. Here it's the same um, as a fraction, 55 to 90 or 55 over 90. All right, so um, if you can remember that they're the same as writing fractions, that should really help you um, with determining equivalent ratios and the whatnot as well. So try to remember your fraction rules as well because a lot of those will be applicable here. All right, so we're going to start out just by expressing our ratios. I want to write these ratios in my three different ways, meaning in word form, in ratio form, and in fraction form. So number one tells me I'm comparing seven pairs of yellow sneakers to 12 pairs of green sneakers. So what I'm saying is I'm comparing seven to 12. All we're doing is writing our ratio. That's one way I can write it, word form. I can also write it in ratio form, 7 to 12, using the colon, or we can write it in fractional form, 7 to 12, 7 over 12. 7 is the numerator, 12 is the denominator. So nice and simple right now. All we're doing, looking for our numbers, writing them as a ratio. The thing to remember, though, is it's going to be important which way we express our ratios. We want to make sure that we put the right numbers in the right spots, because when we start getting into proportions, that's where we could get confused if we set them up backwards. So here I'm just whatever was listed first. I'm gonna I'm going to list first. So here I want to compare 25 calories burned in three minutes. Now this is a ratio. Technically, more specifically, we could call it a rate, which I'll define for you tomorrow. So don't worry about that. We're just going to compare our two values. So what I'm saying is I'm comparing 25 to three, or in this case, 25 calories to three minutes. Or I could label it. Uh, I could write it using my ratio form with my colon, or I could write it as a fraction form, as a fraction, 25 to 3. Now what you'll notice is this is why um, in the end of the last few videos I was telling you to leave things in um, improper, as improper fractions. If we were looking at this as a fraction, it's an improper fraction. However, ratios are never, ever, never expressed as mixed numbers, okay? So do not try to change this into a mixed number. Leave it this way. I'm going to say that again because it's important. We do not express ratios as mixed numbers, all right? Keep it in this form. So I know you look at it and you're probably thinking, oh, it's an improper fraction. I can't leave it that way. We're leaving it that way. Do not try to change it. 25 over 3. Think of it as I get to be lazy in math. I don't have to do anything else. I'm leaving it that way. All right? All right, our last one uh, was actually a practical example. For every 41 minutes of class, you get four minutes of break time or four minutes of hall time. So what I'm saying here is I'm comparing my 41 minutes in class to my four minutes in the hallway. Or we could compare it using our ratio form. Or we can compare it using fraction form. And again, you'll notice it's an improper fraction. We're going to leave it that way, all right? Um, and the thing to remember, if you're writing from one form to the other, whichever number comes first is always your numerator. Whatever number comes first is going to go on the top of your fraction. All right? Um, now, the next thing I want to look at is writing equivalent ratios. 
And so what you'll notice is if we write them in fraction form, that should come pretty easy to us because we've written equivalent fractions. We've had to. Um, we can do it with any kind, but here I've shown you in um, your fraction form because it's a little easier sometimes to wrap your brain around that because you've got a basis for it. So, for example, um, if I'm doing this, I'm doing it the same way that I would uh, rewrite fractions. I'm either going to divide both the top and the bottom by the same number or I'm going to multiply them by the same number. So in the example, I've given you seven, ten, uh, 7 over 10, 7 to 10. Want to write an equivalent one? Well, I can't reduce it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply both sides by 2, and that will keep it um, as an equivalent ratio. And then I get 7 times 2 is 14, 10 times 2 is 20. So 14 to 20 is uh, an equivalent ratio to 7 to 10. It's meaning um, the portions are, are the same. Um, so this is a little tricky sometimes, and when we get into solving proportions, I'll explain it a little further there, too. When we're talking about ratios, um, it's a certain measure of item to item. So it's a little tricky in how we change it. You can't add the same thing to both sides like you would if you were solving an equation. Okay? Um, so here we'll just practice. We're going to write an equivalent ratio. So here you'll notice I've written this in ratio form. If that throws you off, feel free to rewrite it as the fraction form. If it helps you to rewrite your ratio in fraction form, write it that way. But the same principle applies whether I write it this way or this way. I can do whatever I want to one number. I can multiply it by any number as long as I multiply the other one by the same number. So remember, we can only multiply or divide. We can't add or subtract. That's not going to make it the same. So um, I know I can't reduce this because they don't have a common factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it easy on myself. I'm just going to multiply by 2 because multiplying by 2s is easy. If I multiply 3 times 2, I get 6. If I multiply 7 by 2, I get 14. So 6 to 14 is an equivalent ratio to 3 to 7. All right? Here it's already written in fraction form. And this one, I, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to divide because I noticed that um, these have a common factor. Oh, 6 will go into both of these. And if you wanted, we could even divide it by 2. I could write more than one equivalent uh, ratio. We could write um, an infinite number, actually. Um, the same way we could with fractions. You could write an infinite number of equivalent fractions by constantly multiplying um, by higher numbers and so on. So I could write any number of um, equivalent ratios. I could have multiplied if I wanted. I'm going to divide just to keep my numbers smaller and make it a little bit easier. So uh, 18 divided by 6 is 3. 24 divided by 6 uh, gives me 4. So um, this would actually reduce if we wanted. We could reduce it like we would a fraction. 3 to 4 is an equivalent ratio of 18 to 24. All right, exact same thing we were doing when we did fractions. Here I've written it in word form. Again, if the word form throws you off, go ahead and write it in fraction form. 55 over 90. And then reduce if that helps you. Um, if you can do it right from this form, that's good. Um, right now I'm going I'm to reduce it because I notice these are both divisible by 5. So I'm just going to divide both the top and the bottom by 5. 5 goes into 55 11 times, 5 goes into 90 18 times. And I wind up with an equivalent ratio of 11 to 18. So again, um, if that's throwing you off, go ahead and you can rewatch the older videos with writing equivalent fractions because that should help you out as well. If you have questions, post them in the comments, email them to me. Uh, I'll answer those in class for you tomorrow. Uh, have a great night, guys, and I will see you in class.